<laughs> Not just the Mercy Watchers, but everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Richard Ludwig, president at the University of St. Thomas in Houston, Texas. Today, I'm in beautiful Napa, California at the Napa Institute's annual conference. And I'm so delighted because we have Monsignor James Shea is uh, here with us today. And he's president at the University of Mary in North Dakota. And things are just going great guns up there, right? It's a joy to be with you. Yeah, no, things are great. Yeah, tell us about everything you've got going on because I know it's a whole lot. Well, <laughs> so we're a modest sized university, about 4,000 students all together. Mm -hmm. And we've got, uh, yeah, there's just an awful lot going on. Our, our whole thing, and I think that this is the same with the University of St. Thomas, is we want to be a great Catholic university in the midst of the new evangelization. Amen. And so we take very seriously the trust that's placed in us in the young hearts and minds who come through the door. And so we're always very intent mm -hmm. upon providing not just career preparation, we think that that's a sort of a baseline right. uh, that we need to provide, but also formation and education for the whole of life. Mm -hmm. And so I think that summarizes what we're doing and what you're doing too. And we're great admirers of the University of St. Thomas. Well, you're very kind and we're great admirers of you too. I mean, you know, we, we, we have a giant metropolitan area and you don't have that. No, we right? don't. No. But you and have, have February. And you have February. <laughs> we do too. Ours is different than yours, yes, obviously. I think so. I so, think but, so. But I'm a great admirer of yours, especially with the residence halls and just the growth that's yeah. happened uh, since you've been president. We've Mary. seen tremendous growth and it's been very moving to see young people coming uh, not just from our region but from mm -hmm. all over the country right. and I think that uh, it's 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 a real testament. It's true you know you're in a very exciting big urban area like Houston uh, but a place like the University of Mary proves the point that fidelity is contagious and it yeah. does attract. In other words people will move to Bismarck, North Dakota. <laughs> That's right. Uh, which is a fun place. It's a, it's a, it's a place. It's a great place but it's not kind of a destination in most people's minds. Right. The people will come if they can get a solid, great Catholic education yeah. at, a, at an affordable price. And that's what they get, and right? they get that. So that fidelity, sort of the magisterium, the, the, the message of human formation in the Christian understanding is so attractive. And you know, in many cases, what we hear, and I'm sure you do too, it's rare especially at a price that families can afford. Well, and we feel like we have a more, I know you agree with me about this, we, we have a moral obligation to make sure that that, that that education is affordable for parents who, 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 are, who are very thoughtful right. about the way that they educate their children. Maybe they send them to Catholic schools. Mm -hmm. that, that investment of tuition is a precious gift, and we want to make sure that we're honoring that investment and not squandering it Honor along that the way. Commitment, right. That's right. So tell me, what's next on the horizon? Well, you know, one of the things that people mention at a place like the Napa Institute is that small essay that we did from Christendom to Apostolic Mission. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it's I, I've read it. It's awesome. If well, you haven't read it yet, do. Well, it's, it's very surprising to us. We published it mostly as a, kind of an internal charter at the oh, University really? of Mary. And so we never expected that anybody really would be interested. <laughs> we knew that we'd have a few, a handful of people who would, who would be interested in right. this sort of concept. But the idea that we're not in Christendom anymore, that our society is not informed as it was at one time mm -hmm. and, and, and sort of guided by Christian values in terms of belief and behavior and all of those things, and that we're in a new apostolic age, that's right. a very potent idea. And I think we've touched a nerve in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic as we look all around us and some of the cultural battles that are right. happening in our country. Uh -huh. in, in, in regard to all of those different types of things, it's important that institutions like ours are very thoughtful and intentional about making sure that we're securing the mission and that we're building into the life of the university and affecting the students who come to us with a true apostolic spirit. Mm -hmm. Because it's a time for courage, it's a time for joy, it's a time, it's a time for cheerful, cheerful warriors, Amen. not for glum Amen. and you know. Amen. And so it's right. a it's a time for saints. Right. And that's what we have the great honor and privilege of being able to form at places like ours. We get to take young hearts and minds, which are, Dante says in the Convivio, that young people are at a time when there's a stupor of mind for them. <laughs> and that, that time shouldn't right. be squandered. Exactly. We're committed to not squandering it at St. Thomas and at the University of Mary. 
Amen. I, uh, I, I, it's always a joy to be around you. I look forward to the annual meetings when you and I have a chance yes, to be indeed. together. So uh, thank you so much for stopping by today. Richard, God Appreciate bless it. you. Great God to be with you, you today. Too. Thank you, Monsignor. I've been talking with Monsignor Shea from University of Mary. God bless you and have a great day.